Welcome back, listeners, to another episode. I'm Ricky. And I'm Brittany. And we are Paper Paper Screen. Screen. Before we get into this episode, I want to say huge shout out to our listeners in Minnesota. Hi, guys. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're staying warm because we know how cold it is over there. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, Brittany, what have you been up to? So, I recently finished reading Less Than Zero, which is Brett Easton Ellis's first published novel. And he's the dude who wrote American Psycho and he wrote... um, Rules of Attraction, the one with... Oh, with Kate Bosworth? Yeah, is she in that? And the dude from Dawson's Creek? Yeah, James Vanderbeek. Yeah, that guy. Anyway, so I love Less Than Zero. It's like, it's kind of like slice of life, first person. And and he comes back from college, this guy named Clay. Mm -hmm. And he's a part of like Hollywood's wealthy families, like big producers and whatnot. He's like the son and all Mm. of his friends are like Nepple babies, basically. It's kind of fun because like we would know like every time he goes somewhere, it's like somewhere we would know, you know? Yeah. Because it's like the guy who wrote, you know, Rules of Attraction Mm -hmm. and American Psycho. Like when I'm reading it, I'm like, when is this going to get crazy? Yeah. And then it does like third of the book. It takes a dark turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Like, like I was so shocked. I was like, oh, shit. But then I don't want to like give spoilers, but then it was cool because it really made me think differently about like the entire book. But it was pretty it was pretty good. I really liked it. What about you? What have you been up to? I recently went to see Mean Girls the musical at the Pantages. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you're familiar with the movie Mean Girls, it's pretty similar, except like this has got more music and if that's like your thing like you'll probably love this i'm not like a huge musical person but i enjoyed this you get the references if you watch the movie it was cool being back at the pantages you know being recognized (laughs) (laughs) i also saw a special screening of wakana forever and the queen the mother angela bassett was there as a guest speaker that is insane yeah i know i I like saw you post a picture from that and i was like what the fuck i couldn't believe it and and she just won like a globe and that's like i mean yeah that's crazy which they didn't really mention they Mm -hmm. kept saying like she's oscar nom like sag nom and i'm like uh, she just won a golden globe did you forget that right But yeah, watching that movie the second time, that's my second time watching it. (sighs) All the emotions. It's for real. Well, you were like, it's so, like, you you know, because I don't like spoilers, you were like, it's so good. And I think you said, like, you're definitely going to cry. And I cried, like, within, like, the first, like, (laughs) 10 minutes. Like, I was like, what the fuck? And, like, throughout the entire movie. And it was, it exceeded everything. I mean, I didn't, I try to go in with no expectations, but it exceeded everything. Yeah. And like, I even honestly thought I was like, did I, do I like this more than the first Black Panther movie? Yeah. I kind of go back and forth. I honestly think they're both different movies. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it, like, just go watch it because it's on Disney Plus now, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And the villain, like quote unquote like i think that's one of the things i really like about this specific arm of the marvel universe is they have the most complex quote unquote villains yeah the two cultures Mm -hmm. basically are in conflict with each other and it's like that's kind of like real life yeah it was just so like even that like i mean that's what it was like even in um the first film but just getting the background of the quote-unquote villain and just being able to really, really, really empathize with them. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was really cool. I liked that it kind of went into surrealism. and Deep movie. Definitely check it out. 
So another thing that I wanted to mention, because we literally just saw this last night. Oh, my God. We saw Knock at the Cabin. But the book is called? Cabin at the End of the World. And I will say they're two different things. Like you would get something different from each. Yeah. I think the movie like did a really good job of making those choices. I knew you'd read it and I think you'd mentioned like liking it. Yeah. And then like after watching it, I was like, fuck, I really wish I had read the book first. Because like a book is always better than a movie. I understand that they're different, but it was one of those things where I, I had no idea even what the movie was about. So like reading the book would have been really fun. Yeah. I want to mention like Paul Tremblay, who wrote the book, he didn't get enough credit for the movie movie like in marketing promoting the film like his name's not mentioned i think a lot of people saw it as like an m night Shyamalan original or something because like his name was like slapped on everything yeah but paul tremblay's name was not mentioned on the poster it's now no mention of it being a book wow you know? so i just want to give credit to paul tremblay because he's the original source material i i think i added a bunch of his books on goodreads yeah. like after seeing that i was like "Ooh, he's dark i want to read his books yeah and even stephen king has mentioned like he's like really good wow yeah father of cinema well stephen i meant father of Cin- cinema stephen king Steven, Steven Spiel- Spielberg. <laughs> did I not say Steven? I thought you said Steven Spielberg. I think I said Steven King. Maybe you did. Okay. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you high? <laughs> no. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to say is that what I've noticed, people need to stop mocking M. Night Shyamalan's name. because you People know, mock his name? They would be like M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong or whatever. Oh, I didn't know that. And I will say people need to stop saying that because it's racist. So, and and I know how that feels. Right. Anyways, I just wanted to say those things. (laughs) I'm just going to real quick. I also want to say if you're an M. Night basher, you're stupid. (laughs) He is king. He is king. If you do not like his movies, you will like his craft regardless Mm -hmm. yeah people like hate the happening it was done intentionally to be like camp yeah Yeah. i think he did say it was like kind of an homage to like be horror film interesting i felt like knock at the cabin had like an homage to like 70s horror it did oh it did he said that no but i got that vibe because like opening credits yeah which oh my god i love that i was like this font yes the font (laughs) the yellow yeah and it was different he directed it so differently because that whole first scene is like really tight really tight Mm -hmm. on their faces yeah it's intense it was very intense Anyways, Brittany, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about two awesome body horror films. We got Titan or Titan. I think it's pronounced Titan. Yeah. It's a French film. So however you say T-I-T-A-N. And then we're also talking about crimes of the future. It's body horror. It's also body positivity. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) self-acceptance and gender identity sexual identity body dysmorphia yeah and then also like well crimes in the future i would say has a lot to do with like commentary on society but not in the same way titan does yeah they have similarities like as far as especially machinery and like like those types of materials being more but they're pretty different I mean, what would you classify that as, like, futuristic? Well, let's get into it, I guess. Yeah, let's We're just gonna... <laughs> get into it. <laughs> We're gonna... Okay, so let's get into Titan first. Okay. Je veux rien faire. Je veux juste voir, c'est tout. Attends, attends. Reste. J'en suis. Tu vas voir. Reste. Okay, what was watching it like for you the first time? I remember seeing the trailer for this in theaters and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Don't know anything about it. It was kind of giving me like more 
like Kill Bill vibes. But I never got around to seeing it. It's hard for me to watch like foreign films in theaters just Mm. because like you have to be in a really good mindset for that, especially the patience to read subtitles. Yeah. So I I ended up watching this on Hulu um, because you told me to watch it. You're like, you want to see the really fucked up movie? Watch this. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, okay, let's do it. I mean, it was hard for me to watch. I had to pause it multiple times. (laughs) I was like, whoa. And then I was like, whoa. I was like, what a ride that was. Like, it was like I was sitting at home. And I'm like, oh, God. You could not guess what, what the next turn was going to be. No. And also, I had to rewind it. I was like, did I just see that? Like, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. It's like pulling different genres into one movie. When I was like putting together my notes for yeah. our episode, I was like, fuck, it's like eight different movies in one. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if like she was gonna go the slasher route but then it gets into like some weird i don't even know how you would describe this like is there a term for like having like sexual desires for machines (laughs) (laughs) i know it's like how do we even get into this oh my god so there is a term for this Okay, what is it? <laughs> Mechanophilia. So that's when you want to have sex with machines. Uh, sexual attraction to machines. So this is <laughs> mechanophilia, you guys. <laughs> I learned listen, something new. <laughs> no king shaming here. <laughs> Yeah, so that was pretty much my experience. So real briefly, I'm going to say the box office, $5 million globally. Budget, $6 million. Wow, so they didn't even make their money back. No, which is kind of interesting because usually, you don't, I don't know, like, I mean, it's so close, but I would wonder if they've made their money back as far as like the streaming yeah. and all that, you know? Yeah, I watch it the same way, just on Hulu. Oh, I thought you saw this in theaters. No, I was at a mutual friend's barbecue and they had a friend there that was like, you want to see a really crazy movie? And then so I was like, uh, yes, I have to watch it immediately. Let me just go back to the synopsis. It's a story about a girl named Alexia that lives with this titanium plate in her head after suffering from a car accident and then grows up to be a famous car model, exotic dancer, and then things take a turn after a series of uncertain crimes. Starring Agatha Rosselli, Vincent Linden, Lies Salome Hadi. <laughs> Do you remember him? He was like the only person of color in the movie. <laughs> was he one of the firemen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was a cutie. I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now you got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> And Garance Mer... Mer... <laughs> A French name. Merlet. Mer... <laughs> Merlier. That's what I was trying to say. And she's from Raw. Anyways. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard that I'm sweating. <laughs> And okay, so this is directed and written by Julia DeCorno. Yeah, that's how I'd say it. Apologies if we're getting it wrong. Now that we got that out of the way. So we start with her. She's like a little girl and she gets in this crazy car accident and they put this like titanium, I think, plate in her skull. Yeah. And you can like visibly see that scar. It's like like when I heard about the movie and I looked it up, I was like, wait, I remember this poster mm-hmm. because of the scar. Yeah, which is a really cool poster, by the way. Yeah. But yeah. And then like you said, it gets into, well, it like opens and it cuts ahead. Yeah. Was she kind of acting strange when they were driving home, like like having a lot of disdain for her parents mm-hmm. when she was a kid? Yeah. Something with the, the dad, mostly. Yeah. Was he the driver when the accident happened? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Which makes sense later. She burns the house down while they're sleeping. So she kills them. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I thought for some reason, like, the wasn't the dad, like, sleeping with a man, too? I don't remember. We're confusing I, ourselves. I know. This movie. I haven't seen this in a long time, so I don't remember much of it. But yeah, when we we jumped ahead of her being a kid, we go to a car show and she's like a famous like car Mo- car model. Yeah, who like go-go dances. Yeah, and like I think she's famous because she has the plate, right? Like yeah. that's what that's what makes her interesting. Her dancing is very provocative. It's almost like 
it draws in a lot of attention from men. Right. It's almost like a mating call. Oh my God. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. And that, I mean, it happens later again. Like, yeah. But we can get into that like later. But yeah, like, when does it get crazy? It gets, well, okay. So after the go go scenes, kind, wasn't it kind of long or it felt a little long? Oh, yeah. And even that, just jumping from her being a little kid. Which actually, I was yeah. gonna say the same director. We were we were just talking. Their first film was Raw. They both opened the same way with a child in the car on a yeah. on like a trip of their parents. Yeah. Which I guess isn't that remarkable, but maybe it's supposed <laughs> to symbolize something. Well, maybe that's why they're kind of uh, in the set in the same universe. Yeah. And the girl that's in Raw is in Titan. She's one of the dancers too. Oh, I guess I just yeah, I guess I don't remember. Or I didn't recognize her. But yeah, jumping ahead to the car show is like, because there's like techno music and it's like really saturated colors. And it's just so different from like driving in the countryside or wherever they were before. Yeah. And then we do that long shot of her walking, remember? And she goes to her car and then this like dude shows up. Yeah. And he's kind of like a, a huge fan. Yeah. He, he asked for an autograph. And he tries to kiss her, right? Well, I was going to say, he won't leave her alone. Right, yeah. And then I think she does kiss him, but then she takes like this chopstick out of her hair. Like a metal chopstick. Yeah, metal chopstick, because metal is like a thing in this <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> she takes that metal chopstick and jabs it into his neck. And like that's like the first kill that we see in this movie. Yeah, I think he was he was going to like force himself on her. And so she just was like, oh, hell no. Right. At that point, I was like, oh, this is going to be like a slasher. She's going to go. It's going to be like Pearl. Right. <laughs> but uh, no, that's not where it goes. <laughs> so after that, she's still at this like garage thing where the car show is. Yeah. And she starts to hear noises from the garage. And it's actually the car that she's been modeling on. And right. this car yes. is like, it's kind of like an old muscle car. With yeah. Like it's got a lot of like, is it decals? Yeah, decals. Pimp my ride. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Where's exhibit? <laughs> this car is like kind of speaking to her in a way. Yeah, it's kind of calling her. Is it? Is it? Um, the hydraulics. Yeah, the hydraulics. Like, <laughs> truly <laughs> pimp my ride. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and she goes inside the car and literally fucks the car. I didn't realize. That the car was humping her. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just like getting thrown around and she's finding pleasure out of it. It's just so. I mean, I think she was on the stick shift. Shut up. Really? Yeah, that's what I gathered. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. But yeah, at that point in the film, I was like, oh, okay, I get why people say this movie's pretty out there. <laughs> and then it gets even weirder. <laughs> He gets even, yeah. Then after that scene, she's hanging out with one of the models. There's like some romantic vibes going on with these two. Maybe it's two different scenes, but like I just remember she gets stabbed. And I don't remember if it's like the same scene as the house where she like starts killing everybody and it goes like full kill bill that's the part oh, i was yeah. like oh quentin tarantino like Shh. this is like totally <laughs> it's like a house some random kind of like a weird like house party like yeah 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 you're right i totally forgot about this because doesn't she kills everyone and then doesn't she like shower and shit yeah and then she like goes home where her parents are she's like casually having cereal and yeah. like her like underwear, which I was like kind of weird because she's like an adult, like in her underwear, like eating cereal, watching yeah. the news. And the news is, was the news talking about the kills? Mm -hmm. And she looks like she has no remorse at all. She's just like super chill. Yeah, it doesn't phase her. Yeah. And that's kind of like the vibe, I, like what I was talking about when after she has like the metal plate put in her head and gets in the car with her parents. Yeah. It seems like she she's no longer kind of human. You know, like doesn't feel or like doesn't feel like empathy for human. Because when she does those kills, it's like, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, like very cavalier in its own way. Does she have sex with another car? <laughs> <laughs> in their garage? I don't remember. But she, yeah, yeah she there's a there's a few scenes like this, and I'm just like, I don't know which one came first. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, she lights the house on fire and dips. Wait, 
When does she shave her head and shit? I think after that, I think she like leaves and then goes to like um, a bus station and goes into the bathroom and like, right? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. So this character is conflicting with a lot of things. Yeah. You could say gender identity, sexual identity. Yeah, like she just doesn't fit into like societal norms in a lot of ways. Because of this titanium plate on her head it's fucking with her mental stability because she's kind of yeah it seems like she doesn't have a plan she like just starts killing everyone well i'm i did get the feeling like when she first stabbed that guy in the neck that she enjoyed it and then like she goes on her killing spree she's having sex with cars i also got the feeling like it wasn't the first it seems like she has affairs has affairs with cars that's like that impression i got i took it as like that was like her first time and it's what kind of drives her mad oh maybe yeah so bus station changes her look and then this movie completely changes yeah it totally does and that's why i was like confused i was like what in the fresh hell yeah (laughs) yeah that's what i mean it like took a it took such like a different direction i was like and then i kept thinking the whole time she's in this new setting, which is like this fire station, the entire time I'm like, when is she going to leave? Yeah. And it turned into another, like a new killing spree or something. Her body starts changing at this point too. Like that's why she's shaving her head. She's feeling pain in her stomach. Right. Cramps. Cramps. We don't know what it is. <laughs> no. And at this point too, she's like living this lie where she's pretending to be this man's missing son. Yeah. And all the dudes at the fire station are like, um, we know you're not his son. Like, Well, not yet. Not yet. Not right away. At some point, she becomes part of the fu- firemen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's like in training. But this whole time she's like disguised as this missing boy living with this weird man who gives himself uh steroids yeah <laughs> it's the- it's um um lucius malfoy right what it's lucius malfoy from harry potter draco's dad it's that actor isn't it oh no Wait, uh, no? no oh my god it's my memory just like garbage. it looks like him though that guy's a different person though i'm pretty sure he's english oh shit <laughs> oh you're right vincent linden yeah oh yeah actually now that i'm looking at this he doesn't really look like him like, yeah. Kinda. <laughs> yeah so while she's there her stomach is like growing yeah like she and you then eventually it's like pretty obvious and like she's okay still pretending to be this man she's right. taping her boobs down yeah, it's like she at some po- it's at some point she's just like decided like I'm not leaving, I'm staying here. Like this is a, like I can for, and I guess I don't really know why. Maybe because she felt abandonment from her parents that sh- this person is giving her the right attention. Yeah, cuz he's like ob- he's obsessed with his son, which I mean who wouldn't be if your kid went fucking mi- I mean it's tr- so tragic. Yeah. And then the wife shows up. Yes. And she knows that she's not. Right. But she she like doesn't express that to the dad, dad. right? Because she knows he's like in a fragile state of mind. And then so, so when she like gets Titan alone, she's like, um, you're not my son. Yeah, you're definitely not my son because you're taping your fucking boobs down. <laughs> <laughs> That is a thing, though, and, I guess. And then she's like, how many months are you? <laughs> because my God. her stomach is like. Yeah, her stomach. That's the other thing. She's trying to tape her stomach down. So at this point, we know that like sh- she's pregnant. Yeah, I was going to say really quick. You know how the guy thinks it's his son? Mm-hmm. So I guess that's like a real kind of thing that can happen is when your child goes missing, that hope, like when when like the child comes back and, you know, they're older or something. Yeah. You like, like there's been people who have lied and been like, I'm your missing son. Yeah. And they'll even have like a different eye color, but the parents believe it because they want to believe it, you know? It's like orphan first kill. <laughs> <laughs> If you know, you know. (laughs) So funny. But yeah, she's straight up pregnant. And then, oh, doesn't, and then she fucks the, she fucks a, um, fire truck. The fire truck. Oh my God. Yes. Sorry. (laughs) Didn't mean to scream in your ear. You're so excited about this. (laughs) No, because I wanted to talk about 
the scene before that is like when she's dancing on top of the fire truck and it's the scene where like all these firemen are they're having a good time what's interesting about it is that like these men are so masculine yeah at the same time they're kind of demasculating when they're all dancing together yeah because they're they're all if you think about it it kind of like replicates um same-sex prison right so Mm. like you're all together all the time you're making food together you're everything yeah you know like you're kind of like soldiers together and so like you get drunk and you're no longer inhibited totally when they're all dancing they're they're kind of telling alexia to go up on the fire truck and dance for us like they were not expecting that yeah i got it was kind of like a hazing thing where it was like like get up there dance dance get up there get up there like they're hazing and she took it serious she was like yeah she does like all of a sudden that that car go-go dancer comes out yeah and everyone's just looking at her like what yeah and um i think that's when like the lies salome character he notices right away that like that's that one model from the car show and I think he tries to tell the older guy that's playing her dad. Doesn't the dad, don't you like suddenly see the dad in like the doorway? And that's when she stops dancing because she sees him too. Yeah. He like walks in. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then he, then he carries on. Acting yeah. Like it's his son. I think he's just like, he doesn't want to believe it. And like, you know, he's going to continue going with this like, oh, this person is my son. And he is essentially an addict. With his steroids, right? Yeah, which can like affect your cognition, I think. Yeah, so he's in denial. And then at one point, like, doesn't she kill the guy? Ly Salome character? (gasps) Yeah, because like they're doing like a training. I'm not sure if it was... Like a drill? Yeah, it was like a drill training. And they accidentally blow up. (gasps) That's right. Or he blows up. Yes. And I think she did it on purpose. Yeah, because they're, they're doing like, either if it wasn't a drill, then it re- was real, but it was like a real fire. And yeah. yeah, like it seemed like she wanted him to get blown. Yeah. But anyway, so one of the things I like loved is when it's pretty clear, you know, that she's pregnant is like <laughs> when she starts like having like the motor oil leaking. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, so she got pregnant from a car. Yeah. The gestation period's a lot quicker than like a human one. Yeah. It was because like even when she's like living with the fire people, it's like every day it's like growing, which like that was one of my favorite parts is when it's growing so much that her skin splits open and it's like Ew, a metal yeah. metal stomach. Yeah. It The way it split looked so realistic to me. It's so gross. Yeah. And like you can, yeah, like you said, like you could see the metal underneath the skin. Yeah. And I'm like, how is she not bleeding out, you know? I mean, wasn't motor oil coming out? I guess, but maybe at this point, like her whole body is turning to metal. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe like ever since she had the titanium plate, it's just been changing her. Oh, that's interesting. It's been mutating her maybe. Like, maybe it's been leaking in her, the titanium, like having some sort of influence to her blood and her brain. So maybe it's the titanium plate. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I think that was my, the thing I liked the least about the movie is when she actually has the baby, like when we see the baby, because I'm waiting for like a mini car (laughs) or like a metal baby. Like an android. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Megan. <laughs> oh, and the d- <laughs> so the dad helps her, and like he's holding the baby and everything. But it was a real fucking baby. Is it? I mean, it I looked like a, it. I had to look at it like a couple times. That baby's spine is very metal, like. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, because the old man is like holding it. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So the baby, but yeah, the baby's like yeah, half machine half human or whatever i guess i was just kind of hoping it was going to be a car (laughs) yeah so we were talking about how these 
two movies, Raw and Titan, connect with each other? Yeah, I was reading, um, and it was I, I saw something where so the director Julia had said this is a continuation on the themes in her debut Raw, specifically the idea of unconditional love is so remarkable and hard to find. So I think like the dad, I guess the you could call him like the adoptive dad. Yeah. Like his unconditional love cuz she's like metal, motor oil leaking out of her and births this baby and he's he's he like st- like doesn't turn away like or act disgusted. He like oh. embraces the baby. We're in raw the sisters kind of like looking after the younger sister. Uh-huh. And then like you find out the parents like the like the husband didn't leave his wife. He stayed with her so she could like and she can just like feed on him. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to make two <laughs> movies that connect with each other, give us a third. What are yeah. you going to come up with next, Julia? <laughs> I know. We're, what are you doing? We need a trilogy. Right? <laughs> I also, this was super interesting to me because we had talked about the whale having like a 10-minute standing ovation. So at con, this got a nine-minute yeah. standing ovation. <laughs> I have that on my notes, too. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, like I said, like it's con, so it's probably expected to have long standing ovations. I did have that thought. I was like, is this just like every movie yeah. that like plays there? I'm sure Crimes of the Future had a standing ovation too. But I heard people walked up. <laughs> oh my <sighs> good grief. I had also yeah, I I did see that yeah, many were drawing comparisons to the body horror. Yeah. Of of Cronenberg. I have another fun fact. Yeah. The principal photography began in September 2020. Oh. So production was initially set to begin in April 2020, but was delayed because of COVID. I I guess I assume this was made like pre-pandemic. I don't know why. So did I, because I thought like I definitely saw the trailer for this like 2020 Mm. before the pandemic even started but then i was like oh wait has it been that long but yeah it's weird to think it's 2023 like it's been three years since the pandemic started anyways final thoughts on this film i think it's i don't like the second half i'm gonna be frank i didn't like it i wanted it to be like this body horror like crazy movie i don't think it's like bad i just like don't really love it i felt it felt really long and like dragged out i guess i mean i would say if if like you enjoy unpredictable movies and you don't mind reading subtitles if unless you you know understand french i think it's worth watching yeah it is very art housey so i mean it's not gonna be for everyone but i found this to be enjoyable to watch even though i was like what the fuck is going on (laughs) and i will agree i did like the first half too and that's kind of the route i thought it was gonna go but i guess it kind of symbolizes the whole theme of the movie which is like you don't really know the character's motivation like yeah because they're dealing with gender identity and sexual identity that the movie doesn't really know what it is either yeah i mean that sounds about right because that also ultimately goes into unconditional love like which actually that's a great segue into crimes of the future because if you think about titan the unconditional love can also represent like she is not human in the traditional sense and the baby is not human in the traditional sense sense right And that's the exact same thing that's happening in Crimes of the Future. Yeah. Um, what's that TikTok sound? Mm, I love the filming of the cinematography of it. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I need to see that. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Yeah, that's how I would describe this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, segue to our next film, Crimes of the Future. Hell yeah. Maybe I should let you tell us what this movie is about before we get into it. Sure, it's basically about this guy who has an art partner and, like I was saying, this kind of desolate future 
mm-hmm. where there's still like a society functioning and everything, but like no one's like it, you can tell there's just like it seems like less humans around, and it seems like people aren't taking care of like buildings and stuff. Yeah, because like in the background of a lot of shots and like a lot of buildings they go into, it's like pretty rundown, and they do like perform perfor- performance art and like mm-hmm. what seems like these sort of underground industrial like places and he lives in like this crazy house and you kind of quickly see that like there's something going on with him where he like sleeps in a really strange way he like spends a lot of time on like different weird like machine furniture and she doesn't and so you know they're like different yeah and like their performance showcase is like basically showing like the metamorphosis of his like organs yeah and they present it in like a avant-garde yeah way yeah exactly um the artist's name his name is Saul I guess Saul okay and it's played by Viggo Mortensen it's starring Leah Sado Christian Stewart and Scott Speedman. This is directed and written by body horror master himself, David Cronenberg, who did The Fly, which is one of my favorites. And I've actually never seen this movie, but Video Drone. I saw it when I, it's been a very long time. I should rewatch it, honestly, because yeah. I don't really remember anything. If there's like a screening somewhere in LA, we should go. Oh, I'd be down. Hell yeah. Actually, I bet New Beverly would. Probably. Yeah. On 60 I saw. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I saw Rabid there. What? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen that. So it was that's fun. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he did a history of violence. Which I know. Which is totally different. Right? I saw that. I never saw the movie, but I saw that he was a, the actual director of that. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> what? This is not giving body. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about our movie experience. Well, um, we went together. We did. We went to the Grove. And if anyone has ever been there, it's a very touristy area. <laughs> yeah. And it took me forever to find parking. <laughs> and I almost was going to bail out on the movie. <laughs> I know you were texting me for like 20 minutes like I'm still looking like just nonstop and I, I was getting kind of worried so I was like I feel like Ricky's gonna leave cause... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I did <laughs> just kidding <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad that I saw this even though I wasn't a huge fan I mean it's a unique movie it is it was not what I expected it to be from the trailer that's what I'll say oh 100% Yeah, by the end of the movie, I was like, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think we talked about this on our top 2022, but yeah, you and my partner, like we walk out and you're both like, and he he said, that was the most pretentious piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) And I was so like, wow. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you were clapping at the end of it. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you actually liked that? <laughs> I was like confused. But no, this is what I thought the movie was going to be about. I thought he was a fucking alien. And they were oh. like doing testing on him. And like this alien was so like provocative that like like everyone was like obsessed with him like wanted to know his body yeah because in the trailer kristen stewart goes you hear her say surgery is a new sex yeah and she's like cut me open i want you to cut me and i'm like what ew (laughs) (laughs) what is wrong with you surgery is a new sex isn't it and she's like quote-unquote virgin oh i never got that surgery is the new sex Does it have to be new sex? Yes. Yes, it's time. When I was watching Caprice cut into you, I wanted. Yeah. I wanted you to be cutting into me. What's the budget and the box office? The budget was twenty-seven million. Mm-hmm. The box office was four point six million. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I feel bad, but he's an acclaimed director. That's the thing. When you're someone like Cronenberg, it I doesn't think, matter. It yeah. doesn't matter what box office numbers mean to you if you're an artist. And even just like 
the film funding and stuff, like, I don't think there's as much consequences as for other, like, up-and-coming filmmakers and whatnot. Like, when you're, because, like, when you're someone who just, like, has the notoriety and the respect, I think people are more so forgiving and willing to, like, let you do things. And there may even be, like, it might be one of those movies that just, like, makes its money back in the future. Um, we can kind of just like talk about the world building. So the movie starts and it's like this mother and son in like, I don't like some villa off the ocean and it looks like normal Italy to me, like Mm -hmm. just like that side of the coast. That's very like everything's kind of beige and whatever. And then when they go into the home and so again, it's like, because I, I interpret like I my thoughts went to it's like a, a building that's literally like hun- 100 years old or hundreds. Yeah. So I didn't really think too much about everything else. And the mom is just like, don't eat anything in the ocean and like all this stuff. And I don't really think much about it. I mean, it's a kid in the water. Yeah. My first thought was this is like Vigo's character as a kid. That's like. I was also thinking that too, but like this kid looks nothing right like him. And then we like jump to this kid and he's eating the plastic garbage can in the bathroom (laughs) and the mom is like pissed off and then she kills him. Yes. She suffocates him with a pillow and it's like there was, it was pretty clear that she like didn't like this kid because he was like a pain in her ass but it was you know we don't really know what's going on because we're like i mean yeah i I feel like i may have thought like maybe her son is an alien or something like maybe Mm -hmm. she adopted him and and like it turned out he's like eats plastic and i don't know like it was just so strange yeah but then we soon later find out like more about like why right and we meet his dad yeah it's kind of like then we just jump to like these two artists doing performative art and when they're was he cut open the first time yeah so i think it starts off with like she's cutting him open with the machine and then we go back to their house and it's like the house is even like very quote unquote like futuristic because it's it's just like seems really big and kind of gothic in its own way Mm -hmm. and it just has like one piece of furniture in every room and it's just like very yeah. strange. <laughs> <laughs> I love the architecture, or not the architecture, but like the production design of yeah like, the bad because it kind of reminded me of that artist H. R. Geiger who designed like the alien oh. stuff, but it wasn't him. Oh. <laughs> it was. I, I'm sure like there was like inspiration from that, but who was it? Carol Spear, a woman. Shout out to women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then so his like art partner she sticks like this little camera inside of him and is like "Ooh, a new discovery like and again i'm like not totally sure like why or what's going on and then i think okay he's just like this unique person who grows more organs than what we think human bodies have yeah and that's when i was like oh it's getting more interesting because now we're kind of learning about this character like my mind was still thinking oh he's fucking alien (laughs) yeah right I'm like, okay, are we going to get to his origin story? Yeah. I think at some point I was like, is she his nurse? Is she his wife? Is she yeah. like, like, what is, what is the relationship other than being like art partners? Eventually we see that they do have like intimacy and stuff, but yeah. And then we, she, she's like taking, and oh, that's the other thing. He's kind of handicapped. Like he has like motor issues, but they come and go mm-hmm. and he's like pretty weak and he like wears, it's almost like he doesn't want to get sun exposure at all. Yeah. And they, they go to like a organ registry. I don't remember that part. You don't remember? That's like Kristen Stewart and the other guy. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah, they're the organ. So it's like you have to apparently go register with like the country or state or whatever when there's a new organ discovered in a body. That was also confusing because I'm like, okay, so this is happening with other people and like is why did they have to register it? Like, is it okay? You know? And then it's, I don't remember how this happened, but like this detective comes into his life. I don't remember the detective. The black guy. There's so many scenes of just him and this guy talking. Oh, yeah. Which his storyline didn't really go anywhere. (laughs) 
I know. It was like he. There was a lot of storylines that didn't go anywhere. Right. He was like, tr- was he trying to find, track down like the secret pro organ? Yeah. And so he thinks Vigo can like be his rat or mole or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, and it was so like so. Then you, then it's kind of clear that like there is like clearly something really intense happening with society and mm-hmm. the new organs. At the registered organ clinic, that's when we meet Kristen Stewart, and she's infatuated with him. She's kind of like starstruck. And then they cut into him. She's like having like an orgasm kind of. (laughs) Yeah, she's like a little too into it. But it comes off as like a scientist, I thought. And then at the art shows when I thought she was becoming like aroused. But what happens after that? Like, when does it get more interesting? Oh, oh, it gets oh. interesting <laughs> when <laughs> when we meet, like one of his machines has to have some work done and these two young women show up to, to work on the machine. Right. Or they bring the machine to the two young women or something. We find, like, they're like, oh my God, they're like so interested in this model that he has like it's an older model and they're like Mm -hmm. wow we've never seen one in person like this is really cool and again it's like what's going on like so how long is like and like we don't really know what their intentions are because like there was a one point where they were like getting naked and like yeah they were laying in the bed yeah leah goes to their warehouse to check on everything they like undress when her back's turned to them and then like very playfully both of them nude go into like the machine and they're like "Ah, surprise yeah what (laughs) i was like uh okay (laughs) i know i was like wait are you guys all gonna like hook up now yeah is this gonna be like an orgy yeah but it didn't show anything like leah just like laughs it was interesting and i was like okay yeah what does this have to do with the plot (laughs) right (laughs) But yeah, we get, eventually we get like introduced to this guy who is like pro, secret like pro organ is like what you gather or at least, I don't know, you, and then you know that he's the father of the boy who's dead. Yeah. And that's played by Scott Speedman, right? Yes. And what, what is he from? Because I know I recognized him. Underworld. Have you ever seen Underworld with Kate Beckinsale? I mean, parts of it. I mean, he's in a lot of movies. He looks very similar to Martin Henderson from X. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, like we get introduced to that. So it's like, and we know that the detective is like looking for people who are like going against like what's supposed to be allowed, which is like, you have to report all organs. This is like, there's a lot of policing. And then we also find out that like, there's a beauty contest for like oh organs. yeah okay yeah is that when we meet the girl with the sliced face um, or is that something different i don't remember but yeah. like it's it's kristen stewart's office partner and he secretly is a part of this group that is super infatuated with the organs and like they do like this beauty contest basically and he's like i really think you should enter it and then he's like i think he's referred to this like dentist or something right and the because the dentist takes photographs yeah and or something like that and he's supposed to take vigo's photographs um is that before or after that one show with the guy with the ears i think it's like close to each other that was such an interesting scene yeah that was gnarly (laughs) i was like ew ew. (laughs) yeah (laughs) he has like ears growing all over his chest and right was it his chest yeah it's like all over his body but i thought they like made him like like they stitched it on him that's the impression i got like there's this sort of like you can be a person who has these extra organs and then there are people that's like accepting of that and then there are people that are sort of like a appropriating it if you think about it like i'm i support this so much that i'm like putting other people's body parts on myself yeah and it becomes like a fashion statement yeah (laughs) yeah it's like this this like rebellion (gasps) oh my god so maybe that's what it is it's actually like uh like an avant-garde fashion show that oh yeah totally yeah because it's kind like in this sort of it's kind of feels like a like high society underground whatever because they'll be like having wine at these art shows and that's part of what the illuminati does (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, and then who interviews the the wife or the mom, the ex wife of the the man who is kind of leading like the diet or not diet, um, the food industry for the extra organ people. Is it the chick with the sliced face? I think it's Vigo. Otherwise, it's the actual detective. But he goes to the prison to talk to the lady who had suffocated her son. And she starts going on like, yeah, he's a f- he was a beast. Like he ate plastic. He was like, I kind of like, I'm not accepting that. I'm not going to accept that that's my son because he's not human, in her opinion. And and like, that's kind of how you get like the gist of like society is not ex- is not re- like they don't want this. Mm hmm. They don't want this weird phenomenon happening. Whereas her ex-husband, the father of the boy, is clearly on the other side of things. And he like was looking for his son. And then, yeah, that becomes part of like an art exhibit. Yeah, the, the son. The son's body. And when they cut into him, like, don't they find out that he's half? When they cut into him, he's filled with other people's confiscated organs. Oh. Yeah. And it's, and everyone's like offended. Oh. Because it's like he turned into, they turned his body into like a um, an activist statement, you know? Oh, yeah, because it's like tatted or whatever, right? Yeah, they're all tatted. And it was like, these are people's organs that the state is taking. Okay, starting to understand. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yeah, like, and then you find out this dude is like making, he's straight up making plastic bars. Oh, yeah. And eating them. And like, he's got this kind of secret underground where like people are eating them. Yeah, and it looks like a chocolate bar. Yeah. But like, when other people who eat it, don't they die? I don't remember, but it's made out of plastic. So like, if you and I ate, it we're gonna get sick or something i just remember he like hands it to the guy that's like kind of flirting with him or something yes when he shows up at the art show yeah yeah and the guy like eats it and then like he started to choke i think he was like puking vomiting i don't remember but i just thought he was dying (laughs) yeah and i was like oh did he poison him with this right poison chocolate yeah (laughs) poison berry (laughs) it's kind of hard to figure out like the motivation that was like the really cool part of the movie that i really liked was so like throughout the whole thing vigo is like it's like every day there's something different going on with his health yeah like he can't eat and it shows like that like dentist guy or whatever he was maybe he wasn't a dentist but the guy was supposed to take his pictures for the beauty show even him but like both of them are have to sit in these like really weird chairs (laughs) and like that move and so when he's trying to eat it's like moving his body i'm like doing it right now it's like moving his body around and you're just like what it like what is going on like (laughs) and then i'm thinking oh like maybe is can is there blood not pumping enough like what it, what is yeah, the purpose is of this? Like bouncing him around like a right, and like is is this person sick and dying? Yeah, like why are why are, why is their health so different every day? Sometimes they can walk, sometimes like not so much. Like yeah, but yeah, and then like finding out at the end, all these people that are growing new organs, they're basically like malnourished and like putting food that we would eat into their bodies, but it's like clearly not serving their bodies. Right, and then we find out yeah that actor named scott who's like the father of the kid who's making these bars he gives it to vigo yeah yeah the movie ends with like leah recording him on her like finger camera which i was like i think the only reason they did that is because it like looks cool right you know like her just sticking out her hand like yeah like iron man or something yeah And she's recording him and it's in black and white. And like he takes a bite of this bar, this like mystery bar. And I should also say he's kind of like a part of society where he's kind of like, yeah, there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And I grow these organs, but like I'm an artist. Yeah. So like throughout the movie, I think all these different people are influencing him and he's starting to understand like, oh, there's this like other world where I can like like my body and there's like Mm -hmm. a way to like my body and to live with my body. And so he takes his first bite of the plastic bar yeah, and a tear. It's like so artsy, (laughs) but the tear slowly comes down his face because he can eat it. Yeah. And and it's substance. 
And he's at peace. Yeah. And it's kind of like my whole life I've been suffering. I just need to eat plastic this whole time. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, why didn't you do that before? Because he was brainwashed by society. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's what the whole film was about. And like what we were talking about after we saw it was... Like the film, that opening scene of the mother and the son tells you what the whole movie's about. And it's about how as humans, like we reject what's different and we would Mm -hmm. reject evolution even. And it makes sense that people would start consuming plastic because of how much plastic we've put into the world. Like we're full, me and you are having plastic inside of our bodies. We have microplastic inside of our bodies. Like it's kind of crazy. I'm shiny, hard plastic. <laughs> <laughs> but like it is people will reject otherness so much that they would kill their own son and be willing to like go to jail for it too. Like she knew the yeah. consequences. Yeah. And that's just kind of like, I don't know. I just thought that was like really cool and interesting. And I mean- they're not wrong. I mean, I would have never got that from watching it the first time. Um, did we talk about the two women, the the mechanics? We get context as far as because they're like, um, basically, they come to like repair these machines, these mm-hmm. bizarre machines that help people who grow extra organs. So then that gives you, since they're they're talking about like old models and stuff, it's like, okay, so this this has been something that's been going on in this society for a while. Yeah. It, they're on the side of things where they're, they're not okay with like people walking around eating plastic and shit. Yeah. They just kind of seem like these like, like too hot fun little party girls like that's like how they like but at the end of the film they murder scott yeah you all of a sudden they're like murdering people and it's but it's people who are pro the future of human yeah and their agenda is basically to stop these people and i think they were trying to i don't know if they were going to do that to Saul. right i do think that they were trying to keep an eye on him though for sure Mm. But you know what? We got to talk about the most important part of the film. And that is? Zipper pussy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the zipper pussy scene. Because I was like, whoa. Yeah. Well, basically, um, he because he, they need to be able to go in and out of his body, they make this right. like zipper, basically, so that you can. And, Seal and like open. Yeah, like a quick a- access situation. And Leah, his his um art partner. Yeah, is like fingering him. Yeah, and doesn't she like go down on it? Lick oh it my God, stuff? I totally forgot about <laughs> It's funny because I feel like the first time we saw it, you were like, that was like the part of the movie. Yeah, it was kind of weird because like Viggo Mortensen is doing this weird thing with his tongue because he's like getting turned on by it. Yeah. And I'm like, ew, can you not? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Let me really quick. You had said, which I hadn't, I, I don't know why I didn't even think about this, but you had made a comment that you thought the movie felt like it was talking about being an artist. I was going to say, because you're right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Tell me more. (laughs) Tell me how I'm right. (laughs) Okay. So Cronenberg, he said, I think we're evolving, not devolving. I think the nervous systems are completely different from human beings 100 years ago. I think the use of screens, the use of digital technology has actually altered our nervous systems, right? And Leah, the actress in it, Mm -hmm. she said, to me, it was also a metaphor about what it is to be an artist. And this film is how I, or this is how I related to the film. As artists, we give everything. We give our body and our soul. Yeah. You know, like that does make sense. Yeah, because, like, the whole movie is focused on, like, art. Yeah. Performance art. Right, and using the body as part of the art. And and so Vigo's character, his last name's Tenzer, Saul Tenzer. Um, This is what Cronenberg said about it. Tenzer is really an avatar, a template or model of the artist who is actually giving everything he could give, opening himself up and giving what is the deepest, most intimate part of Hidden Inside. So this is, like, what I'm saying about Cronenberg, like, Mm-hmm. actually is agreeing that this is about being an artist mm-hmm. um cronenberg said he's offering it up to his audience and therefore being incredibly vulnerable to ridicule to rejection to misunderstanding to anger and to me 
that is the model of a true passionate artist. And this is from an interview with Variety. Shout out to Variety. Wow, that like makes me think about the movie more. Yeah, I pretty much liked everything about the film except for the detective scenes because they were just so, it was just like. Them. It took you out of the story. Yeah, because it was bit. so boring. Yeah. Okay, so this was David Cronenberg's first feature film in eight years. Shit. What was yeah. his last one? Side effects. Oh, that was, was Soderbergh. That was Soderbergh. That's right. I think it was a history of violence. No, that came out longer than, longer ago. There's no way. There's a movie from 2014 called Maps to the Stars. Oh, it was actually Maps to the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard that like Vigo likes to work with Cronenberg because like he's very selective of the roles that he plays, and it's like his films are more on a. It's not like some big blockbuster action. Exactly. Like I think he's over that. He did Hidalgo <laughs> and was like, I'm fucking done with Hollywood. Yeah. So he wants to do more artsy films that are more his style. Yeah, and I think it's kind of like because of the the success of Lord of the Rings, you kind of see the same thing with the actors from Harry Potter, like and Daniel Radcliffe has talked about this, but it's like I'm in the position where I can actually be in films that I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. I don't have to chase notoriety because I have it. Right. And money. Yeah. So I mentioned earlier that people walked out during this movie. They left because they couldn't handle the violence. I think they were talking about like maybe the cutting. And like, like the gore. Yeah. They said five to ten minutes into the movie, people started walking out. And that's what he predicted. Interesting. I was going to say, I never saw the trailer for this. How did you hear about it then? I don't know. Advertisement? Like posters? Probably posters. Like, I didn't really know what it was about. But I, from what I could see of it, I thought it was definitely a horror movie. It's like social commentary. Yeah, just like a, a drama. Kind of noir. Anyways, uh, final thoughts on this? Uh, I liked it a lot. I don't, I guess it's not for everyone, but I thought it was great. I thought what it was saying was like on point. And yeah, there's like some people that are pretty interested in like society, like conversations around society or sociology, and then also environmentalism. And like I texted them and I was like, oh my God, watch this movie so we can talk about it. Yeah, I recommend this film to like any Cronenberg fans though. Because I think if you've seen his work, you're familiar with it. And this film is a little too artsy for me, but maybe I would have to give it like a second watch. Yeah. A third to actually like grasp everything. Yeah. That we just talked about today. <laughs> I know. I would actually really like to rewatch it too. Yeah. Well, that's the end of this episode. Where can we find you, Brittany? You can find me at humble underscore book underscore reviews on Instagram. And then I also like reactivated my other Instagram which is not book reviews, but I think it's Britty underscore Gusto. Wow, a resurgence. Yeah. And you can find me at some call me underscore Ricky on TikTok and Instagram. And if you like this episode, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at Paper Screen Podcast. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe. You know the deets. And on that note, bye. bye.